Is there objection? Without objection, so ordered. A bipartisan bill sanctioning China is now heading to the president's desk. It aims to punish Beijing's crackdown on Hong Kong. The bill will impose sanctions on Chinese officials who are involved in implementing the new national security law, as well as banks that do business with such officials. Critically, our legislation also takes another step. It penalizes banks that choose to finance the erosion of Hong Kong's autonomy. Banks that would put marginal profits ahead of basic human rights of the people of Hong Kong. Beijing's new law in Hong Kong carries penalties of up to life imprisonment to target those accused of subversion and separatism. Such charges are often used by Beijing to suppress dissidents and human rights activists in mainland China. The bill is a larger signal to China. It's a message that the United States and the free world are no longer willing to look past some of the worst behavior that's been occurring. It's a message that our patience has run out. According to the bill, named Hong Kong Autonomy Act, President Trump will have the final say on specific forms of the sanctions. In theory, he could cut off the sanctioned bank's access to the international dollar transaction system controlled by the U.S. Experts have argued that the finance sector is the U.S. trump card in terms of sanctioning China. Bloomberg reports that China's largest banks have over $1 trillion in dollar funding at stake and face potentially steep fines, according to the new bill. And the sanctions target not only Chinese or Hong Kong banks, but any global banks whose customers include Chinese officials and their relatives. U.S. economist Peter Morici wrote that by sanctioning all foreign banks, the U.S. would force some of the largest banks in Germany and France to make a choice do business in New York or Shanghai. Meanwhile, Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross told Fox Business that all companies who have Hong Kong as their headquarters for Asia are likely to begin to rethink whether that's still a good idea. In an earlier interview with NTD, senior vice president at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce said that their members are worried about the development. You're changing Hong Kong's status and, and mucking around with, with Hong Kong's rule of law and, and transparency and sense of uh, independence, as it were, as in, in a word, from, uh, from uh, much of what happens on the mainland is, is, uh, you know, is probably not a great idea as far as our membership is concerned. The new Beijing law targets not just Hong Kong citizens, but also foreigners. The governments of Canada, Australia and Taiwan have issued warnings to its citizens about traveling to Hong Kong. Canada said they may be at an increased risk of arbitrary detention, leading to extradition to mainland China. And we've seen some of the warnings come out from places like Canada um, about you know, the, re, the, the, the potential challenge for uh, foreign citizens operating in, in Hong Kong. And, and you know that's worrisome. Um, to, to be candid, but you know, I think a lot of our members, um, you know, have have strong uh, ties to Hong Kong, have deep roots in Hong Kong, and and you know, frankly, many of our members have uh, are are active on in in China proper. So if Hong Kong just becomes another Chinese city, I think um, you know many of our members will roll with it. But you know that that I think um, would be very unfortunate for Hong Kong's special role. Reporting by Penny Joe and Paul Greeny, NTD News.